recognize the Premier. My apologies, Mr. Speaker, as I arrived in uh, what seems to be a nick of time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I do want to uh, um, uh, thank you for, for the recognition. I want to uh, enter a few uh, uh, I want to enter a few comments with respect, respect to the speech from the throne that was delivered uh, last week. The first uh, speech from the throne under uh, myself as the Premier of the province, under uh, what is the new leader of the opposition here in the province, and as well uh, a new Lieutenant Governor uh, here in the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. So there's been a significant amount of, uh, of change within, within our political system here in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. And, and I must uh, say this, and I, 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 I won't speak on behalf of the others, but it has been a true honour. Um, over the course of the past number of months uh, to engage with people across the province, to engage with, with people on both sides of this house, but most, most particularly uh, to engage with the caucus, uh, the governing caucus uh, of, the, of the province of Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, I truly believe we have the strongest caucus in the nation of Canada. Mr. Speaker, they have input on the direction of, of this government on behalf of the people they represent and on behalf of all of the people of the Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, and I am ever so proud to show up and work alongside them each and every day. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, maybe just a couple of quick comments before I get into the content from the speech of the throne, from the throne. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, first of all, as a, as a thanks to, to, our, to my constituency assistant that serves in, in our constituency office in Roster and Shelbrook. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank uh, Ms. Sally Fitch for, for all that she does. Uh, as I always say, she's the eyes and ears and thankfully the face of our of our constituency office uh, back in Shelburne and, and in the communities uh, across the the, uh, the constituency, Mr. Speaker. And I would also just note that it's uh, uh, Sally and, and myself and, and the community uh, suffered some loss here in the last uh, number of weeks with the uh, sudden passing of, of Sally's husband, Alan Fitch, uh, Mr. Speaker, a bookie, as we all uh, knew him. It was a uh, far a, a good friend of mine and and uh, Sally's husband and a friend of so many in the community that uh, uh, just he passed uh, far too soon, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and he will uh, be truly missed by, by the community of Shelbrooke and I know uh, his children, uh, his grandchildren uh, and, and all of his family, uh, Mr. Speaker, it was a sad day uh, for sure, um, but one I think that when we all realize uh, just how much we value uh, the people in our lives. You, you form friends uh, throughout your lifetime in the careers that you choose and the, the education uh, that you're fortunate enough to participate in. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you form lifelong friends and uh, they're very valuable and when you lose one of uh, those individuals, I think it's uh, just incumbent on all of us to, to uh, not take for granted the people uh, that are in our life uh, so close, uh, Mr. Speaker. I also just want to thank uh, in, in my office uh, Rhonda and Lana uh, that, you know, thankfully uh, uh, deal with uh, me coming in there each and every day, which is uh, not an easy task. Uh, I'm not as home as much as I once was, so Sally uh, is off the hook. I don't uh, walk, walk into that office as much, but Rhonda and Lana get to deal with me each and every morning, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank them for ensuring that I get to the right spot with the right materials uh, at least most of the time, and, and uh, what we think is all the time, but we do get there at least most of the time. And As well, uh, just thank everyone that is employed uh, in this building, uh, Mr. Speaker, on both sides of the House, in our caucuses office, caucus offices, the, the ministry offices, uh, Mr. Speaker, for everything they do, as they as well uh, work on behalf of the people across the province and, uh, and ensure that this, this place runs uh, smoothly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, people in your office ensure that, uh, that everything uh, runs uh, the way it should. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as a, as a governing, as a government always has, and as it should into the future. Last but not least, my wife and kids. Mr. Speaker, my wife here, Krista. Here, here. Um, I'm, I'm so thankful for everything she does. Uh, in particular, over the past year, when you know we get these uh, what might be a little bit out there ideas that maybe you want to put your name in for for a run to be uh, the leader of a party or possibly the premier <coughs> of the province, and and uh, she's been my best friend for over 20. Well. We've been married for over 25 years. She's been my best friend uh, even longer than that, Mr. Speaker, and I'm, here, here. I'm so very here. fortunate for everything here, here. she does. And I always say, all of us in this assembly, um, we don't serve alone. We serve uh, with the support and love of our family. And I want to thank mine, Mr. Speaker, my wife, Kristen, my children, Carter and Taryn. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, uh, the, throne, the, the speech from the throne that was delivered last week uh, was uh, moved by the, 
by the member from Lumsden Morse and seconded by the member from uh, Martinsville Warman, uh, Mr. Speaker, was titled Standing Up for Saskatchewan. And I think that's a relevant title given where we are uh, today, uh, Mr. Speaker, with some of the headwinds that we are facing uh, with our economy, some natural resource prices uh, that we're facing, uh, some global prices, Mr. Speaker, um, but standing up for for, to ensure that the, our economy and the industries and jobs and the, and the jobs that our families have in communities across this province have every opportunity uh, to succeed, uh, not just this year, uh, Mr. Speaker, but into the future. I think it's also incumbent on us, uh, on us uh, this time of year as we deliver the speech from the throne, Mr. Speaker, as we, as we enter uh, after last night, have got through the, the candy season or Halloween season, um, which is a great season if you're a child, uh, Mr. Speaker, but it, as we uh, now close in on Remembrance Day that we that we remember to think of our veterans and honour our veterans that have served in our country, that have preserved the opportunity to have this parliamentary system or this system of governance that we have. And it doesn't operate um, without uh, our military, Mr. Speaker, and those that serve on behalf of our nation of Canada and by extension our provinces. And we should never uh, let a day go by without acknowledging that, Mr. Speaker, and uh, showing small acts of appreciation whenever we can. The first act obviously would be wearing uh, the poppy, Mr. Speaker, as, as we all are uh, as we enter this season, Mr. Speaker. And we thought that we could do something small in this speech of the throne to signify and honour uh, those that serve in our, in our military, and we'll continue to work with them to ensure uh, that currently serving uh, military uh, uh, people as well, Mr. Speaker, in our province uh, can continue to, to, uh, to serve as seamlessly uh, as possible across the nation, uh, Mr. Speaker, when they come and spend a few a few months or a few years here in Saskatchewan, but we wanted to introduce and offer free fishing and hunting licenses for those, for those veterans, Mr. Speaker, that have served us so well. We changed some of the exemptions around their, their first-time register, first registered vehicle inspections, understanding that families may move here from time to time with two or three vehicles, Mr. Speaker, and the expense uh, is just an unnecessary one in many, ki in many times. It was requested by the individuals that are serving here, Mr. Speaker, and we want to work with them to ensure that as they serve us, Mr. Speaker, as Canadians across Canada, that we aren't uh, imposing costs on them that may uh, be unnecessary. Mr. Speaker, we also indicated in this speech from the throne that we will be uh, we will be offering our 60 scoop apology uh, this yeah. year, Mr. Speaker, or this as soon as we are able, Mr. Speaker. And I want to commend the Minister of Minister of Social Services and the Minister of Government, Re Government Relations, First Nations, uh, Media and Northern Affairs for the effort uh, that they have have uh, put forward in engaging with with uh, the 60 Scoop Indigenous Society of Saskatchewan and hosting the sharing circles, uh, Mr. Speaker, that are ongoing as as we speak, uh, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the apology that we ultimately will offer on behalf of the people of the province will be a meaningful apology, Mr. Speaker, and it'll be an apology that is worked on uh, together, and we look forward to offering uh, that apology, Mr. Speaker, uh, this session. Mr. Speaker, we had, we had brought in Clare's Law, Mr. Speaker, a law that was first introduced in the United Kingdom and was named in honour of, of Clare Wood, Mr. Speaker, a woman that was murdered by her partner and a woman that was unaware of his violent past. Mr. Speaker, what this, this legislation does is it allows the police services to disclose relevant information about someone's violent past, Mr. Speaker, thus the name. And Mr. Speaker, Saskatchewan will be the first province in Canada to introduce Clare's Law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, we, we have gone on to support families uh, across this province that may have a, experienced interpersonal violence, Mr. Speaker, expanding the leave available uh, to them, uh, Mr. Speaker, and ensure that they can access this leave to access the required supports or to seek medical, medical attention or to get legal or law enforcement help, Mr. Speaker. Um, we have talked and discussed with families across this province and, and we have, are taking steps to support uh, those, uh, Mr. Speaker, that have have uh, experienced or may, ha may experience interpersonal violence by extending and expanding their leave. We continue to support families, Mr. Speaker, families that, that may be experiencing uh, times of critical illness in their family, Mr. Speaker, or may be experiencing um, a growth in their family, Mr. Speaker, and expanding the opportunities that they have for parental leave, expanding that to 63 uh, weeks, Mr. Speaker, adding a week of maternity leave so that our parents, Mr. Speaker, are able to spend just a little bit more time with, 
with what will be that next next generation, uh, if you will, Mr. Speaker, um, and ensuring that family members that have been uh, challenged with or facing uh, a critical illness also will be able to take 15 weeks off to care for for their loved ones, Mr. Speaker, and the support for our families across this province is so very important. That's why we always talk about enhancing our economic opportunities so that we can, in turn, make decisions to support communities, uh, support families, uh, Mr. Speaker, which is ultimately what we are in this, in this uh, fine legislature to do. Mr. Speaker, with respect to families, this past year, shortly after I had the honour to serve as Premier, uh, this province was was rocked with uh, what was quite likely the largest tragedy of my lifetime and likely possibly the largest tragedy of this province and, and <clears throat> one most certainly I think is fair to say that that everyone felt across the nation uh, and around the world uh, Mr. Speaker in the in the accident with the Humboldt Broncos bus. Well Mr. Speaker indicated in this in this speech from the throne, in this document, in our year's work, Mr. Speaker, is we're going to continue to increase our road safety across the province, Mr. Speaker. We're going to start by looking at, continuing to look at, Mr. Speaker, this is work that has been ongoing for a while with our commercial, our commercial uh, uh, driver, um, our, our, our commercial driver uh, training courses here in, this, in Saskatchewan, and we're going to int introduce changes to that to that training program here in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, and we're working with the, with the companies involved as well as the associations to ensure that we have consistent standards, uh, not only across this province and increased standards across this province, but consistent standards across provinces in Canada where we can, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that our regulations align in a number of different ways, and we indicated that earlier this week in an announcement we did, but most particularly when it comes to commercial driver training, Mr. Speaker, um, we are going to we are going to we are going to bring those standards in uh, over in this uh, in this legislative uh, session, Mr. Speaker. We are going to continue our work and expand our work in intersection in intersection safety across the province, Mr. Speaker. The Ministry of Highways has in a, in a, has already implemented an intersection safety strategy to reduce the the potential for collisions at at our highway intersections across the province. Seven hundred thousand dollars has has already been dedicated this year to clear a number of sight lines and and to ensure our intersections are safer for, for our families that are traveling between our communities, rural or urban families, Mr. Speaker, and that safety improvement program uh, that includes things like turning lanes, rumble strips, and lighting at these intersections has increased, Mr. Speaker, over the last 10 years by about $6 million, up to about $7 million uh, today, Mr. Speaker. We also indicated in this speech from the throne that we are going to continue to improve our community safety for Saskatchewan people. That's a priority for our government. That's something that we have heard in our travels over the course of, of the last year and, and likely a little longer than that, Mr. Speaker. And we, we introduced the, the PRT or the Protection Response Team that has since actually been called to over 1,300 calls for action, Mr. Speaker, and I hear of it up in the area where I live and I hear the effectiveness and the, and the opportunity that they have to bring some of the uh, technology that our provincial response team has uh, to the ground level, Mr. Speaker, that the RCMP may have but may not just have in that area of the province, understanding the, uh, the vast geography that we have here, Mr. Speaker. The protection response team continues to uh, be an effective part and one of the parts, uh, Mr. Speaker, as we move forward in ensuring that our, our communities across this province are safe. Mr. Speaker, added to the protection response team is the, the crime reduction team. And that was created just two months ago, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there was a, one crime reduction team in the city of Prince Albert and one in the community of North Battleford. And these teams are there, Mr. Speaker, to conduct high intensity, targeted enforcement in areas that have been ad identified as, as hot spots, to settle these down, Mr. Speaker, and to ensure that those communities are safe. Since September 1st, when this CRT team or crime response team was crime reduction team, pardon me, was established. They have already made 172 arrests, Mr. Speaker, 123 tra traffic stops, 122 charges, Mr. Speaker, and they'll continue to be part of enforcing the laws that we have uh, here in the province, Mr. Speaker. We have heard much about trespassing legislation here in the province over the course of the last year and a little bit as well as, as we talk about some of the increased crime, uh, not just in Saskatchewan but across Western Canada. And this session, 
And this, we took uh, the initiative to consult with the people of Saskatchewan, to work with the people of Saskatchewan on what the right balance is between the, the rights of rural landowners versus the rights of, of the public and the public access to, to these private lands for things like hunting and, and things like snowmobiling, uh, Mr. Speaker. And these consultations are, are going to guide us in the direction, and we've listened to this feedback, and they will guide us in the direction, Mr. Speaker, and we'll be introducing legislation uh, this session uh, Mr. Speaker, with respect to what we have been told by the people of this province. In saying all of that, we must balance our approach, uh, Mr. Speaker, as we address crime in our province of Saskatchewan. Enforcement is but just part of that approach, uh, Mr. Speaker. We need to continue to address the root causes and helping those that are, that are struggling with other challenges, uh, Mr. Speaker, that may cause them to, to be committing a crime or be associated with someone that is, is committing a crime, and that includes continuing to support our mental health and addictions challenges that we have in this province, and in fairness, I think it's fair to say that we have uh, mental health and addictions challenges across the nation, Mr. Speaker, and the Minister of Health has, has discussed that. But our investment in mental health, Mr. Speaker, remains steadfast. It's unprecedented in years gone by, Mr. Speaker, since 2007. Our health budget is up about 50 percent. Our mental health budget up about 60 percent, Mr. Speaker. And the combined mental health investment across the, the government, uh, Mr. Speaker, is sitting at about $300, $373 million today, Mr. Speaker. And there's more to do. There's more to do on a number of these files, Mr. Speaker. But we also need to acknowledge the investment that has come about by, by the guidance that we have received by the people that we represent in communities across Saskatchewan. But some of this investment, Mr. Speaker, includes uh, crisis teams that have been paired with the police officer with, have paired a police officer with a mental health professional, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the, the supports are there. And these, these are operational this winter in Moose Jaw, in North Battleford, in Yorkton, and Prince Selbert. Mr. Speaker, this includes a multi, uh, it includes a, a, um, a multidisciplinary community recovery teams that is now offering service in, in eight communities across Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. And starting this year, we have a, have a pilot project that we will place, uh, me, that we're, we're, we are going to place mental health coordinators in schools in four communities, Mr. Speaker, and work to assess the effectiveness of that investment, Mr. Speaker. Four communities, including <coughs> Regina, Sandy Bay, North Battleford, and Belgoni. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we continue to invest and we continue to work with our, with our partners in health, in education, in justice, in social services to provide uh, the supports that, that people expect their provincial government to provide, Mr. Speaker, and in the way of mental health, we acknowledge and we understand there's more work to do. Mr. Speaker, there's more investment that needs to come, but we also acknowledge the investment that, is, that has been there the last number of years, Mr. Speaker, and been there because of the, the sage guidance of the people that we represent. Mr. Speaker, we must also acknowledge a very large investment, uh, Mr. Speaker, specific to mental health, a very large in investment in the community of North Battleford, and that is uh, replacing a piece of 100-year-old infrastructure in this province that I think all of the people in the province can be proud of the replacement of this facility and proud of the work that it has done for over 100 years now, but that's the replacement of the Saskatchewan Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to open that hospital this year, Mr. Speaker. It's a state-of-the-art facility, and it will be one of the most innovative mental health treatment centers in the nation of Canada, right here in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. It's light, it's bright, it's going to be open, Mr. Speaker, and it'll have many home-like spaces throughout. Spaces for therapy, spaces for recreation, spaces for families to come and meet and, and visit, as well as private rooms for patients, Mr. Speaker. And our government is working as we transition to this new, this new state-of-the-art facility, Mr. Speaker, our government is working to further improve the services to promote recovery and to improve the outcomes of the people that are in this, in this facility, Mr. Speaker, and to improve the outcomes of those that are facing um, the most serious mental health challenges in their life, Mr. Speaker. And we are, we are here to support uh, that, Mr. Speaker, with the delivery of care in that new and innovative uh, facility, Mr. Speaker, the first of its kind in the nation of Canada, and it's an investment uh, that we are proud of, Mr. Speaker. We are proud to make that investment on behalf of all of the people in this province. We are improving and the quality of life in Saskatchewan in this great province with important inv infrastructure investments like that, like that facility, but many other facilities, Mr. Speaker, as well, and many other investments that the people of this province have asked for. 
for safety, have asked for, for services, and we continue, we continue to invest in those services and in the infrastructure that provides them, in, in education, in health care, providing uh, safe highways across the province, Mr. Speaker. So in addition to that, that facility in North, Battle, in North Battleford, we now have thousands of kids that went to school this fall in one of 18 new joint-use facilities that were opened just this past year, Mr. Speaker. Thousands of children in those schools, new schools, addressing the, the expanded number of kids in the province. Mr. Speaker, in the very near future, we are going to open, for the first time in the province of Saskatchewan, the Jim Pattison Children's yeah, Hospitals. That's 92 percent complete today. And we look at that piece of infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, uh, located in Saskatoon, and uh, I can't help but think of the interaction of that piece of infrastructure with, with the, College of, the College of Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan and the investment that has went into, into that college to ensure that, one, it is not on, under, it, it is, it is uh, um, not on probation, Mr. Speaker, with respect to its accreditation, of which it is not today for the first time in a number of years. They've changed their operating model, Mr. Speaker. We've expanded the seats from 60 to 100. We've expanded the residential uh, seat opportunities, Mr. Speaker, from 60 to 120. We're properly funding that college for the first time, Mr. Speaker, in decades. Mr. Speaker, we've invested in the new academic health sciences building, and all of that, all of that, Mr. Speaker, to be able to attract investment and research dollars into our College of Medicine, Mr. Speaker, to be able to attract the very best researchers from across the country and around the world to be instructors in our College of Medicine, Mr. Speaker, but to also be the surgeons, the very best surgeons that work in that new facility, that new Jim Pattison Children's Hospital that may work on someone in our family in the future, Mr. Speaker. That's the service that is provided. The infrastructure and the buildings are part, Mr. Speaker, but it's the people that we're able to attract the people that are able to provide the very best services that we are able in this province, Mr. Speaker. That is, that is the goal of this part of this government. We think of the largest infrastructure investment ever in the history of the province, Mr. Speaker, the, the bypass around this city, of which we hear from, from time to time in this legislature, Mr. Speaker, but it needs to be understood that 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 investment, again, was made on behalf of all of the people in the province, again, Mr. Speaker, to safely bring truck traffic around on our, on our national highway system, Mr. Speaker, our number one, the Trans-Canada Highway, but also to link it to the number 11 highway so that we have access to, to the city of Saskatoon, the largest city in, in this province, Mr. Speaker, and that not only is safely moving that truck traffic around our capital city, Mr. Speaker, on our national highway system. Uh, safely to our largest centre as well as through to, to other centres in Western Canada, but it's allowing families to access this city and access the Trans-Canada Highway safely, Mr. Speaker. And it isn't that long ago we were in this house, Mr. Speaker, and across the province, and in particular on the east side of this city, and not being able to have uh, those discussions about the safety of our families, Mr. Speaker, that are coming into this city and accessing that highway, and that investment has made that road, has made our has made our roads safer and it's made our province safer, Mr. Speaker, and it's an investment that I was proud to be a part of in, in making that decision, Mr. Speaker, through caucus, and that's an investment that I'm proud to be a part of as the Premier of this province. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As noted in the, in the speech from the throne, Mr. Speaker, we continue to outbuild uh, Sastel's cellular, cellular access in communities across the province so that businesses can conduct services and have access, uh, like we do here in our major urban centres, to internet, Mr. Speaker, and data, and, and the things that, that businesses in today's day and age require, Mr. Speaker, and also for convenience and safety at our resort properties across the province, Mr. Speaker, that all sorts of people, rural and urban, visit, Mr. Speaker, so we continue that outbuild, uh, Mr. Speaker, to 100 Saskatchewan communities and 50, 50 communities uh, starting uh, just this year, Mr. Speaker. When you talk about all of this investment that we have had, and we talk about the challenges that we've had the last couple of years, Mr. Speaker, leading into this next year in our three-year plan to balance, Mr. Speaker. These are, hardly, these are hardly austere investments, Mr. Speaker. This is not an austerity environment that we're living in. These are some of the largest investments in capital, Mr. Speaker, um, that have been made in this province. And I think when you average the last 10 years of investment in capital here in Saskatchewan, it's about $2.5 billion. When you average maybe the last 10 years of, of the previous administration, Mr. Speaker, you're under a billion dollars a year in investment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we are continuing to make efforts to balance the budget, but we are doing it while we continue to invest in infrastructure 
like the Bi Regina Bypass, like the Children's Hospital in Saskatoon, like the Saskatchewan Hospital, like the Moose Jaw Hospital, Mr. Speaker. We continue to invest not only in that infrastructure, but in the people that provide the services within that infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. And we do that all while making at times challenging decisions to ensure that we are able to balance that budget, our budget, Mr. Speaker. And we will continue on track, and I'm pleased to, as we all know, or we are on track uh, to do that next year, Mr. Speaker, in this House. Here, here. It's that strong fiscal management, Mr. Speaker, that allows us, that allows us to actually be able to make those investments on behalf of the people of the province, Mr. Speaker. And we have, we have some headwinds, as I mentioned, in our economy, um, but we continue to, to grow. Our population, Mr. Speaker, continues to grow. 11,000 people just this past year. We have the second fastest rate of job growth in the nation over the past decade. That comes from being dead last in the decade previous, Mr. Speaker. Our GDP has grown by some 22 percent. Our exports, our source wealth that drives everything in this province are up over 40 percent in the last decade. Mr. Speaker, we continue to have public and private investment in our communities around, across this province, and it has grown over the last decade five times the national average, Mr. Speaker. This province this province's investment, the, the private and public confidence in the investment in infrastructure has grown by five times the Canadian average, and we were ranked by the Fraser Institute as second out of 91 jurisdictions in the world for mining investment attraction, Mr. Speaker, and continue to be ranked high with respect to investment in our energy sector, Mr. Speaker, a big sector for many of the communities in Saskatchewan, and we'll continue to stand for those industries, Mr. Speaker. We'll continue to stand for our energy industry, we'll continue to advocate for pipelines, Mr. Speaker, and we'll continue to advocate against any imposition of a federal government's carbon tax here in the province, Mr. Speaker. We've implemented a comprehensive plan, Mr. Speaker, not a, not a thought like the members opposite, Mr. Speaker, a comprehensive thought that would address less than 4% of the emissions here in the province of Saskatchewan. We have a plan called Prairie Resilience, Mr. Speaker, that is supported by the industries in the province. We have a plan to reduce our emissions from our electrical generation, Mr. Speaker, and we have a plan to reduce our emissions through our methane reduction strategy. All plans I would put forward that were accepted by the federal government recently, Mr. Speaker and where we will uh, not allow the federal government and we will stand for the people of the province is to not allow them and we'll, we'll take them to court, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that our families, our families aren't, aren't, don't have to pay a carbon tax when they take their children to school, to hockey, Mr. Speaker, or the rates don't go up because there's a carbon tax on their school, on their rink, or on their hospital. So we, we will continue to stand for the people of the province, uh, Mr. Speaker, and continue to stand um, for the jobs in the communities Doesn't across this great right province. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I listened, uh, I listened to the, uh, the Leader of the Opposition speech uh, um, and his, his uh, discussion with respect to austerity and the austerity budgets uh, here in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. And I think this starts to set a clear choice of what is actually going on in this province, what has gone on over the last number of years, and, and what has gone on the last 10 or 11 years here in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. And what we are seeing, uh, Mr. Speaker, is a health budget that is up some 50 percent. I mentioned mental health investment is up 60 percent, Mr. Speaker. That's hardly, that's hardly austerity, Mr. Speaker. More to do. I, I understand there's more to do. We all understand there's more to do, and we're working closely with our communities to ensure that the investment that we put forward on their behalf is put forward in the in the very the most efficient and most effective manner, Mr. Speaker. But we must acknowledge that our health budget has been up some 50 percent, Mr. Speaker. Our advanced education budget is up over 50 percent over this same period of time, Mr. Speaker. Investments in the north, investments in our universities, investments in ensuring that next generation has every opportunity to be trained here, Mr. Speaker, and through the graduate retention program, has every opportunity to actually stay here, Mr. Speaker, for, to have a career in a community that, or to have the opportunity to choose a career in the community that maybe raised them, Mr. Speaker. And we haven't always had that in the province of Saskatchewan, but an increase of over 50 percent to our advanced education, our post-secondary institutes, Mr. Speaker, hardly, hardly an austere decade uh, that we have had here in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, in education. Education, Mr. Speaker, we have gone from 2007 from an education budget that was less than a billion dollars, Mr. Speaker, to this year, some 11 years later, we have an education budget in this province that is over two, two and a half 
$8 billion, Mr. Speaker. That's hardly austerity investment in education. Mr. Speaker, we see a choice, Mr. Speaker. We want to continue to increase that investment and ensure it's effective, uh, on, effective in our communities, Mr. Speaker, in health care, in education, and, and giving our, the, the, providing the services that people expect, but giving that next generation every opportunity. And in order to do that, we need to continue to advocate for the strong economy that we have here in the province of Saskatchewan, and that's something I'll never make an apology for, uh, Mr. Speaker. And what we are seeing set up is a clear choice between our parties, Mr. Speaker. We're seeing a clear choice as we enter the last half of our mandate and start heading for an election in 2020, Mr. Speaker. We're seeing a party, a governing party right now, Mr. Speaker, that is going to fight the imposition of, federal, of a federal carbon tax, Mr. Speaker. And we see a leader of the opposition that supports that, Mr. Speaker, and I'd say that it kills jobs in this province. Mr. Speaker, we are seeing a party, a governing party, a Saskatchewan, gov a Saskatchewan party um, that is always, Mr. Speaker, working with our industries to ensure that our business taxes and that our resource royalties are competitive. As I noted earlier in the, in the Fraser Institute's uh, study, Mr. Speaker, we want competitive taxes to attract that investment here in potash mining and uranium mining and, and the energy industry, Mr. Speaker versus a member of the, op the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, that is pushing and has said publicly that the economic platform of the, pub of the opposition will be higher business taxes, higher resource royalties, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Well, in this province, that costs jobs, Mr. Speaker. That kills jobs in our communities. Mr. Speaker, they put forward a $15 minimum wage, Mr. Speaker. That kills jobs in our communities. And they've opposed pipelines, Mr. Speaker, the very lifeblood, the very lifeblood of moving our our sustainable Saskatchewan energy product to markets all around the world, costing us $7.4 billion this year, Mr. Speaker, not having that access to that world market. Mr. Speaker, thankfully we have a government in place uh, here in the province of Saskatchewan that will always advocate for fair trade deals with our 150 countries, plus countries all around the world. We will always advocate for the ability to transport those products to market, and we will always advocate for a fair and competitive tax and regulatory environment here in the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, unlike the, member, the members' opposite econ, members opposites economic policies of raising taxes and shutting down our resource sector and killing jobs in communities and communities of people that we represent, Mr. Speaker. Those are the policies, those are the economic policies of the Leader of the Opposition and the members opposite. Mr. Speaker, I also, I also uh, listen to the, uh, the Leader's uh, reply to the speech from the throne with uh, <laughs> we listened to it quite intently, actually. In particular, when he got to a, a part, Mr. Speaker, where he started talking about Democrats delivering a, a speech from the throne in 2020. No, he means like the U.S. There's, Democrats. Mr. Speaker, members on this side understand that in the lead up to 2020, we are going to go out to the communities across this province and we are going to ask for their support to govern on their behalf for the days after that, that provincial election. We would never preclude that they would be voting for us. We would never preclude their decision, Mr. Speaker. It is always theirs to give. It's their support to give. There's only other, one other member, Mr. Speaker, in this assembly that has ever precluded that, and that's a member from Athabasca with his statements over the last number of years, Mr. Speaker. And, and I think he usually closes them off with, you guys are over there, the, the people will come to their senses. Don't mess it up, Mr. Speaker, is what he, he often comes to. And I, and, I, and, I, and I note that in that throne speech that uh, the Democrats uh, are you know, claiming they're going to deliver in 2020, I would, they're going to have a throne speech that will dream and deliver, Mr. Speaker, and I'd put forward again that it is going to dream up ways to spend the people of Saskatchewan's money, and it's going to deliver large tax hikes to the people across this province, Mr. Speaker. That's the dream and deliver that the NDP has brought in decades gone by, and that's what they will bring um, given the opportunity again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in, in conclusion, no, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We have a legislative session to go through, Mr. Speaker, and in this legislative se session, Mr. Speaker, we are going to see the Minister of Finance rise in her seat this spring, Mr. Speaker, and she is going to deliver a balanced budget on behalf of the people of the province. This throne, street, this throne speech that was delivered the other day, Mr. Speaker, is a step in the direction to ensure that we are able to preserve that opportunity to balance the budget on behalf of the people of the province, preserve the opportunity to, 
to continue to invest, Mr. Speaker, in the infrastructure in our communities, to continue to invest in the people that are offering those services in that infrastructure in our communities, Mr. Speaker, to continue to invest in the services and the infrastructure that the people that we represent in this province expect their provincial government to, to, uh, to provide, Mr. Speaker. This is a speech from the throne that walks us towards our balanced budget ne next, uh, next spring, Mr. Speaker. It's a speech from the, the throne that Saskatchewan people, that displays what Saskatchewan people have come to expect of this government and to expect of the government that represents them. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I'm going to be supporting the speech from the throne that was delivered last week. I'm going to be supporting the motion that was put forward by the member from Lumsden Morse, uh, Mr. Speaker, seconded by the member from Martinsville Warman, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to the vote. Yeah.